Trade deadline day in Major League Baseball. Big names potentially on the move, but two of the biggest names, Brian Power and Mark Zinno, right here for you, as we always are Monday through Friday. And Zinno, we're now 5-0 and the last two shows. We had one no action yesterday because the Twins pitching changed, but the Tigers pitching change didn't matter because you uh, so eloquently told the people, hey, bet this action. You're going to get a good number when they pull Flaherty, and they did pull Flaherty. And the Guardians scored a lot of runs. So great move there. You're looking at a first five bet, as we think Max Scherzer may be a little undervalued today against St. Louis, who has a terrible run differential, everyone. You had to squeeze that in there, didn't you? Um, it was amazing. I did. I love reading our comment <laughs> section where it says, wow, you can't get to a show without mentioning run differential. Uh, you've become such a predictable figure on the morning wager that uh, people are only tuning in to see if you'll do something different. And apparently you have let them down once again, uh, much like you've let me down on a daily basis. Uh, anyway, the only thing by the way we got right yesterday are the things we said on this show, for the record. Everything else went kind of horribly wrong. That said, uh, Max Scherzer coming back, uh, continuing to work his way back from uh, early season injury. Rangers beat up on the Cardinals 6-3 to yesterday. But, you know, as much as this is about playing on Max Scherzer, uh, it's also about fading Lance Lynn, who's got a 4.1 ERA and a, and a whip near one and a half. He's allowed 101 hits and 40 walks in 101 innings. So, yeah, carry the two. That's also not good. Uh, the Rangers are a team who are bottom 10 in a major, major League Baseball and runs scored at home. They're top 12 in runs scored on the road. Uh, we know the Texas Rangers bullpen is uh, – what's the word we're looking for here, Brian? How would we describe the Texas Rangers bullpen? What do we say? Yes. Ass. Yes. <laughs> uh, so we're going to leave them out of this thing. We're going to get Scherzer here to get through five. The Cardinals uh, kind of look like, kind of feel like, maybe that they are, you know, um, at not really chasing this thing as hard as they could, despite the fact that, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're active at the deadline still. Uh, I, I like the Texas Rangers here in this spot in the first five on the money line, get a, get a relatively good price and, uh, uh, let's see if we can get Max Scherzer to back the way we need to. So Texas Rangers first five money line. That's Mark Zinno, America's number one pommel horse fan, by the way. I found that out yesterday the hard way. Nobody loves I mean, the pommel horse quite like Mike, just, quite like Mark I Zinno. I don't get that event. Like it, it's, I don't really think it should be an event. Like you're just spinning around in a circle. Like not, you're not, you don't even, when you dismount, you don't even like separate. You just let gravity take you to the ground. Like you just stop spinning. I don't get it. Like if you can hop over a fence, put your hands on the bar and hop yourself over, you could pommel horse. Like it, it, it just doesn't seem like one of those things that really should be an Olympic event. I just, I'm not into it. I can climb a fence, cannot do a pommel horse, but I'll tell you what I can do. I can offer up my half of the double play right here. And I'm looking at the Minnesota Twins. Second day in a row, they're facing a lefty. Last night didn't go very well, did it? But I am going to reiterate much of what I said yesterday at first pitch. The Twins against lefties, number one in batting average this season, number four in WRC+. Plus. And since June 9th, they, going into yesterday, they were hitting 315 against lefties, by far the best in all of MLB. Number two was at 279. And the Twins uh, going into yesterday had a 149 WRC+, plus against lefties since June 9th. That was also number one in MLB. During that time, this is a team that going into yesterday had scored more runs than anybody since that June 9th date. 5.85 runs per game for Minnesota. Now, they're not facing Grimace. They're facing Sean Manea, who Mark let us know last week looks like a cabbage patch doll. There you see yep. right there. Okay. Uh, Manea is not as good at home as he's been on the road. So you add it all up. Okay. The Minnesota Twins are bouncing back. It was cluster luck. Okay, we need to talk about cluster luck more on the show. The Mets scored all 15 of their runs yesterday in three innings, Mark. You don't see that every day. They had three big innings. I think the Twins bounce back today. The numbers against lefties are too good to be ignored. I will take them. I will limit this to a first five play. Twins as a short dog in the first five. I think they get to the Cabbage Patch doll. So our double play, couple first five plays, Mark. You like the Rangers of the first five. I like the Twins. Comment down below with your favorite Major League Baseball plays for Tuesday. And don't forget to smash that like button. We always appreciate your support here on the program. 
All right, Mark. Uh, Tuesday, what do you have cooking over uh, on your page at Wager Talk before we get to our favorite bet for the day? Which, by the way, I'm going to warn everyone now, it's disgusting and you're all going to hate it. But, Mark, please tell everyone of what you have going on your page. Okay, why don't you just tell everybody that they should not make our best bet of the show, their favorite play of the day. Um, outside of that, uh, we are looking at targeting one to two plays today. Uh, we haven't finalized them yet as of the uh, recording of the show, but uh, we have a good idea where we're going to go uh, this evening. Uh, we, we struck out last night with the Phillies uh, on the first five. The Yankees all of a sudden decided to pretend they were like the 1998 Yankees and just beat the hell out of the Philadelphia Phillies. So, uh no bueno for us last night, but back again today. Two plays coming up on the site, wt.buzz slash mz. What are you less impressed by, people on the Palma horse or Glaber Torres at second base? I think Glaber Torres should get pommel horsed, okay? And he should get pommel horsed <laughs> the hell out of New York. And if they don't trade his okay. ass by the end of the day, my God, what is wrong with this franchise? Yeah, thank you. There we go. There we go. All the experts agree. Palma Horse over Glaber Torres. All right. I don't know if all the experts will agree on our show best bet today, Mark, because we are taking the Chicago White Sox. Now, we're doing it on the run line, so we get one and a half runs uh, added uh, to our total. And look, I, can you believe this team? They, they are up 5-2 going into the eighth. And for the 41st time this year, last night the White Sox – lost a game in which yeah. they had a lead. That's roughly half their losses. They can't lose football. 16 in a row. Yeah, they can't lose 16 in a row, can they, Mark? Yes, absolutely they can. Uh, but it, that is half their losses because they have 82 of them. So uh, the White oh. Sox have officially clinched a losing season, as if you didn't know that from the first week. Uh, we now make it official. That said, uh, we are going to take the White Sox plus one and a half today. Why? Because if you look at the way Kansas City won that game, look, they only scored two runs. They get a six-run outburst in the ace off a bad White Sox bullpen. And I'm willing to run it back with the White Sox again today for two reasons. One, Kansas City, we know they can't score on the road. They proved that yesterday um, with the fact that they only scored two runs through the first seven innings. And they're 22-27 and 27 on the road this year for a reason. Secondly, Michael Walker is starting for Kansas City. Uh, his numbers are very mediocre. He's very, very hittable. Uh, this, this is purely about, purely about the idea that this streak um, is more likely to come to an end with every single game that they play, and especially the way they lost the game last night. You kind of have to feel like, okay, uh, they'll put it together tonight and against a team that's this bad on the road. I'm willing to take the safest bet in baseball, which is a plus one and a half at a very even money price for the most part, shop around. But uh, the White Sox. We'll keep this thing within a run, if not win this game outright. Kansas City has this dramatic a hitting split, and you'll see on ho at home versus on the road in all of Major League Baseball. It's crazy. I mean, they they're, they hit the cover off the ball at Kauffman Stadium, but on the road, it's a different story, although they took advantage of that beleaguered White Sox bullpen. But we say beleaguered bullpen be damned. Give me the one and a half. Give us the one and a half with the Chicago White Sox. Even if they don't snap the win streak, we are losing streak, pardon me. We can be a winner here on Tuesday. And you too can be a winner if you head on over to either of our pages, wt.buzz slash mz, wt.buzz slash bp. We'll be back Wednesday. No pommel horsing here, just Major League Baseball. And 48 hours from now, Mark, or not from now, but two days from now, the Hall of Fame game, a little NFL. We'll get to start talking football maybe again on the program. I already played the under. Did Patty tell you to play the under? He was under something, right? <laughs> All right, everybody. Make sure you're subscribed.